Check, check out these um, these pit vipers here that Rye Dog's got. They, he reckons they'll deflect the smoke. You can give us a demo. You can adjust the angle of the dangle. And you can go downhill. <laughs> or you can just stay level headed. Just level headed. That's pretty sharp, isn't it? <laughs> what about the uh, little Nick air Nick hook? Nick what? Oh, custom well, air hooks. In the wind, when it's windy. Oh, yeah, when it's windy. What, to slow you down? No, no, no so give, you, give me some face. traction. What's that? So they don't blow off your face, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I so, thought so it was you could flap your ears out to slow you down. <laughs> Pit vipers, they're very racy. I don't know if I'll be wearing a pair. Maybe for jet boating. That would be quite good for jet boating, actually. You could cruise some hot chicks up the cascade. This looks awesome out there. You fellas might not be able to hear me because I've got it in a waterproof casing, so it's just going to be lovely music and water sounds and shit over the us catching par. Oh, what a cracking day, bit of diving, bit of gentleman boat hunting. It's cold this morning, it was blowing its guts out, windy, rainy, freezing tits. It's warmed up now and it's late afternoon, pushing on five o'clock and uh, yeah, we've just got the camp oven on, got the roast going and the boys are getting ready for a hunt, splitting up, going different ways. I'm going to go with Jason and finish the job we started on that one that we didn't get the other day and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll pick it tonight. Bit of luck. I think Harrison's going bush hunting and Mark's going on a stakeout to stake out a couple him and Jason saw last night but didn't get a shot at because they were 600 yards away and it started raining so he's hoping to finish that job tonight and then we'll come back and have some more power and roast lamb and Chunks dropped us off we're gonna climb over this hill basically what me and Jace did the other day climb up over the hill get my swan dry on the way over because I left it over there and then uh, drop down and by that time 
should be getting near sunset. We've got two and a half hours till sunset, so we've got a bit of time up for season. We might even bang one in the forest if we're lucky. Me and Jason jumped the gun a bit and got here a bit early. And uh, yeah, we're just sitting here getting eaten by sandflies, looking at 100 metres of beach, hoping a deer will walk out. It's pretty boring this whitetail hunting, I have to say. It's way more fun cruising around in the boat, blowing them away on the cliffs. The three stashes of broadleaf we've put out haven't been touched, so I'm a bit dubious about this. Chuck some broadleaf on the beach and bait them. Maybe if it was raining, when you chucked it out, so your scent wasn't all over it, then it might work possibly. I don't know. Anyone else watching this that's had a bunch of whitetail hunting experience, How's it worked for you? Have you put it out when it hasn't been raining and gone back and found deer on it? God, I'll tell you what, this is one of the most boring hunting trips I've ever had. You see, me and Jason got lost the other day when we were coming over here and it took us about two and a half hours. It only took us about 15 minutes this time, didn't it? We thought, oh, we'll go over there and it'll take us a couple of hours to get to where we're going, but it turns out we actually got lost and went through the, some of the thickest, tightest stuff there is over here and this time we just turned right a little bit and it was all open forest and just came straight here and uh, we also thought the deer would walk out the same time we did we were here last and we'd be able to shoot and then go back to camp before dark but that hasn't happened it's just and it's, and it's raining now too actually right we've found one well, Jay says, I haven't seen it yet. I've got the camera on it, but I can't pick it up in the camera. It's in the tussock, in the long grass, in the mound grass, and between the flax and the beach. And I haven't seen any yet. He's in there somewhere. Was he feeding, was he? He was just cruising around. Oh, he was eating something in there. Can't bloody see him. Goodness knows where he is. Pretty exciting, though. I hope it's not the elephant seal we saw the other day. <laughs> what ass. Elephant seal, catch and cook. Oh yep, there he is. I see him, he's right on the flanks now. Oh yep, see him? Yep. Can you see him? I can't see him. Oh, he's in the bloody flax and we can see every now and then his head will stick up, but we can't see his body. He moved out, now he's moved back in. Hopefully he comes back out again. He just seems to be cruising around. I don't know, he's eating worms or something out there. Doesn't He's just disappeared around the end of that clearing. He just popped out of the bush real quick. By the time we got set up, ready to shoot him, he popped back in again. About half an hour till dark. Uh, ten minutes later, he still hasn't popped out again. He must have gone around a corner. Got to be quick. We're out of here. Bugger it. Tomorrow, tomorrow, a long walk home. Oh, this is going to be interesting in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't get lost again. <laughs> Could turn into a survival show. Should have kept my big mouth shut. I told Jace he was going the wrong way and he said, sweet, well you can lead then and yeah. <laughs> I don't, my phone's gone flat so I can't cheat and look at that either. Well, this just in, Jason's gone and got us lost again. <laughs> he actually just took the lead over from me. We're not lost, we know where we are, we're right here. We just have to get to the top of the hill and then turn left and then back down, it's just it's always longer on the way home, isn't it? Mmm. I could eat about 10 of these right now, I reckon. One just jumped out right in front of us, 10 feet away. <laughs> Jason just loaded his gun and smoked it. We were making a hell of a racket. <laughs> and crashing. Talking and carrying on. <laughs> oh. Well done. Look at that, eh? Handshakes yes. all around. Oh. 
Whoa, what a shot. You got it right in the nose. Look at that. That's the knee joint. <laughs> no, the other right. <laughs> Where are you going? We're going back the way we came. We've got to go down there. That's the way we just came? No, we didn't. <laughs> we came from up there. You were coming down here. Yeah, remember? I gotta go that way. <laughs> oh. I think oh, we've just God. walked in a big circle and we're, <laughs> we're right back where we were taking the deer out, for Christ's sake. Yeah. My phone's gone flat. I've got GPS now. What's that? I've got GPS reception now. Where yeah, are we? We are back at the start. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Just around the corner from the start. Oh, for fuck's sake! That's funny. Have you got your phone? Oh, you just try to ring the other guys up to come pick us up in the boat. Holy shit, that's hilarious. We just did a massive, <laughs> massive big circle. <sighs> so, we just did a massive circle and we're actually at the same place we were when we were staking the deer out. <sighs> you wouldn't read about it, but you can see it right here. Jason's GPS wasn't picking up signal onto the trees and my phone went flat. Is it working? I really don't want to walk all the way back. <laughs> Send a group text, maybe one of them will get it. <sighs> no, we didn't come around this cliff, did we? Yeah. <sighs> Ironically, we're back on the same stinking rocks we were trying to avoid by cutting up through the bush. Bloody hell, we figure we'll test out the three shot theory if, uh, if we can't signal them. We'll get cell phone reception and hopefully they'll hear the three shots and figure it out and think it's an emergency and come get us. It's kind of an emergency, eh? Oh, the roast, yeah. Eat all the roast. Yeah. Roast lamb. Roast emergency. They've probably got the UE boom cranked and won't even hear our shots anyway. Sweet. We'll, we'll give them a whistle and flash the torch. Luckily someone was on the beach and they saw us and flashed back, so hopefully they figured out that we need picking up and we saved ourselves three bullets. My scope's obviously been bounced, Jase. Oh, oh no. did you miss a deer? That same deer? Yeah. What is it how far off of it? Oh, out of the bullpen. Uh, same height, three metres to the right. When did he shoot though? Oh, well, I blew a white tail head off. Completely <laughs> off. Completely off. <laughs> oh, look at that. Nailed it. Oh, oh there goes oh, my beer. beer oh, look at that. Get on. Unplug that kill switch. Oh, bah. Pull the choke right out. I'm not sure you can do it down there. Mark's just ripped the choke right out of the bloody motor there, so we don't have any choke to start it on the cold morning. We might be paddling out to the wraith and the Joy. Uh, what was it? Research and development. R&D. 
Wraith and Destroy. Destroy. Yeah, that might have been its nickname. Adapted over the last few days. Oh, did you put the fuel tank back in? No. If Mark doesn't get this engine going, there's a real good chance we're going to end up back on the beach. And get wet feet. Keep cranking on it, Mark. Uh, you're supposed to be fixing the engine, mate. Nah, no, bugger that, mate. Too hard. You guys look good paddling. I have to admit, I was a bit dubious when I saw high performance under the Parson logo. Just starting to rain again, just as we set off on our adventure. No oh dear, it's quite cold and windy and it keeps raining, there's no deer, it's ginger nut, ginger nut. Of it. First pull. <laughs> we have done it to paddle. Bloody half frozen. It's so cold out here today. No crayfish here. We're just going to live on crabs. Tail, we call it a white tail. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, Working holiday, Jace. Let's see the missus, mate. I mean, business, yeah. Business. <laughs> What's the guts, mate? I uh, just got a sticky, but, sticky um, butterfly in here for the choke. Just broke a lever inside of the... Um, Sort of the way outboard there, so just freeing it up and then we'll put the carby back on. We might even have a look at a jet while we're in here. Yeah. Alright, what's going on here, Mark? That's got a wee making up a better linkage than what you otherwise would have. Got a bit of a failed bit in here that just holds the end of the linkage in to the shaft in here. So we're um, got a little hickorungi repair job going on. I've loosened these up for early anyway. That was so tight when we first got them. Yeah, as you've installed them, these tools will have to loosen you up before you can get back on with that. <laughs>
biggest deer in the forest. It's probably going to be the tastiest, so. Cleanest shot. Yeah, mate. It's got all those limbs. Jace was giving me a few shooting lessons last night. I've been shooting him in the ass and in the guts, and he just smacks one right in the head. Put a skewer straight up. One kebab. Made that look pretty easy. Me and Chunk were sweating just watching him, eh, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Just gotta get some more firewood. There's a couple of dead raters on the point here. Knock them down, all the stuff we've got is pretty wet. There you go, Farno, you can eat this stuff. It's actually quite good roasted, lightly roasted, bit of salt and pepper. Mmm, delicious. <coughs> Not so good raw. Guy. <laughs> go. Go. Come on, roll off, roll, roll. Come on. We got one spar down, but the other one's hung up on some trees. Long way from the bottom. Well, after all that effort, we've got about two bits of firewood. It's just all hung up in trees coming down. All in a day's work. Not the most productive day's work. I feel like we've just carted a couple of cord there. Still we've got a couple of logs. Oh well. Keep the home fires burning. Just up? Yeah. Uh, marinated ginger. What are you doing there, Mark? Just getting a uh, big bunch of uh, broadleaf smoke chips sorted here for smoking some uh, moki that we've got all prepped up and brined. We're thinking we might get a few embers going on the fire and a couple of layers, sandwich it between a couple of layers of tin foil to keep the moisture in and get it smoky as. Should work, hopefully. Nice and uh, aromatic. Mmm. Mature broadleaf's actually got quite a nice smell to it, hasn't it? What's another name for I think what we're going to do here, we've made up a bit of a dough with baking powder because don't have any yeast. And we're going to layer it with a whole heap of ingredients. Uh, starting tomato sauce, bit of ham, bit of, pork, bit of smoked pork, is it smoked pork? Hot pork. Hot pork and uh, cheese, bit of sriracha hot chilli sauce, just a wee bit there, and a wee bit of extra smoked uh, cheese. Roll it all up, slice it up and uh, do some pinwheels or whatever you want to call them. Bake her up in the uh, camp oven, should be bloody good I reckon. And what's the recipe there? Uh, I have to try to remember my ratio, but it's eight cups of white flour, no sorry, four cups of white flour, eight cups, or eight teaspoons of baking powder, uh, one and a half teaspoons of salt and three teaspoons of sugar, and then just milk and water to, to mix. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. There you go. Just tap it, the hair. Just tap it. Oh, oh let's so. stick it. Let's stick some inside Get it. Put some cheese on. It's still a wee bit doughy, man. Don't look too bad, though. Don't look a dog's dinner. <clears throat> this might be the first time I've had mochi that's actually delicious. Highly rated. Good. Chit chat. Whoa. <laughs> Hot lid. What do you got there, mate? Uh, I've got some mutton chops and some ribs from the white-tailed deer. They're going to be tasty as fuck. <coughs> Good old Scott Sheldon mash and boiled crabs. White tail ribs, chops. Okay. Open <laughs> bits and pieces off there. Mmm, <laughs> power flaps. Take it home. Oh, what a shambles. We're out here today. We're going to leave tomorrow. We called up the captain and he said, come and get us. We're going to Queenstown. Got a couple of traditional Palangi fire starters. Party plates. Oh, g'day, mate. Oh, g'day. Woo. I won't be going in that hut, she smells pretty damn fresh. <laughs> power farts. 12 hours of power farts. Brutal in there. You want to do a loop, so that's your loop size. First lay, they lay out like that. Yep, three of them. I'm going to tuck that under that one, or just pick one. Crack her open like that. Tuck it through. Obviously, a bit, a bit easier if the rope actually melted. And then you've got your next lay along. Just come along the next one, crack her open. Tuck it in. Mm. 
I just hold that up so people can see what one, two, and we've got a third one to do in here on our last lay to pick. And we'll just pull that along the length of the rope. You'll see in a minute that you'll pull it at right angles. And then your next, you just pick one of the three. Do it again. Do it again. How many times? Like what's the minimum? So you want to have a one in here and then another five. So at least five, six tucks. Six tucks, yep. There's your first lay and then your five tucks. That's like what they call us, like a, I don't know, like a structurally sound sort of one. And then you can feather it out on the end of it as well. What, like split them, you mean? Yeah, just like stagger them out. And then these ones here, these next lays that you got, pull them at a right angle. Yep. Like that. You pull along the rope with those ones, it will put a twist in the rope. Yep, okay. Check that out. Maybe if you can make a big fly with this and just biff it out there. <laughs> See if you caught anything. I'd probably make a good streamer. What's the way to good time? Kingies or something. True. Big king.